Hi, I'm Pam. Hey friends, this is Dr. Heather here on Ask Dr. Heather. I am here with my sweet friend Pam Martvelli and we really don't have an outline. We've actually been trying to brainstorm about this Facebook Live for uh, a long time. I've been rolling things on my head at night, you know, as soon as those great ideas come there. So I actually started the week with making a post on my personal page that says, and I don't know about you, but I remember as a little kid my mom would say, make sure you put on clean underwears when, when you travel. <laughs> You know, like, are people going to prejudge you if you're in a wreck as a child and you have dirty underwear? And then, you know, my friend Emily is an ER nurse. She's like, let me tell you, as an ER nurse, most people's underwear are soiled by the time they get there. So right. I guess this is a little bit about prejudging. It's a little bit way out of my comfort zone. I'm super great at sharing other people's sex stories, you know, sharing medical information, tips and hacks to actually help optimize your life. But I also kind of made a... Um, I made a commitment to a group of women that I would try to be more mindful um, and sharing more about my own personal journeys. I know you see all these times this time of year, like people did the 10 day, 10 year snapback. Mm -hmm. You see people losing a thousand pounds or a <laughs> thousand pounds, but you see before and afters and they're very, very, very insightful. They're very inspiring. And you hear everyone making these progresses. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff that are invisible diseases that people don't often see. That can be things like depression. It can be infertility. It can be chronic pain it can be migraines it can be cancer like you don't see breast cancer you know until the surgeries happen and the therapy starts or you don't see colon cancer things like that you know and oftentimes I also did a thing about wishing and dreaming we need to be more childlike so oftentimes you know people don't really wish or dream on a daily basis but then when something happens you're like oh my gosh I I, I wish for this little girl we have a make-a-wish foundation mm -hmm. you know or we say you know I wish I won the lottery today or when your relationship or you can't find the right relationship you're always dreaming and hoping that you'll get the right guy, the right gal, the right relationship, the right job. So oftentimes we're not dreaming and wishing on a daily basis. But there are many people out there who are faced with major healthcare crises every day. And you may not know it. I can tell you, nobody watching is perfect. And everybody out there has something going on, right? We all have health challenges. Always. So um, again, we, we don't have things pre-scripted. But I do want to get to the point here in just a minute. But I just, you know, brainstorming with Pam here a little bit. Because we've both been on a health journey together the last four years and yes. it's kind of funny how God lines those things up I had a skiing accident in March of 2014 I still can't believe it's been five years and about that same time Pam and I uh, really just kind of reconnected opened up our hearts God kind of brought us back together she moved back to Kansas City so tell a little bit about your journey and that's gonna make me tell a little bit more about mine because I have some big things coming up this week and they really are an identity crisis for me and I want to really concentrate on courage I made an amazing post about my son having courage um, and when you have to make health choices sometimes you have to go with your gut sometimes you have to go against the mainstream sometimes you have to go against what you thought would never happen like I love Carrie's post if you saw that she's been doing everything she could she has ulcerative colitis to save her colon was there and then something happened and then she had part of her colon taken out and ileostomy bag you know I just had another dear friend I think you saw me share that she actually breast implants for 13 years it was making her sick so that was a lot for her to have that taken out um, so those are just some things when you have to decide nobody knows so thank you guys for the hearts um, and this is really more about me trying to figure out how to be inspirational how to talk more about CRPS or RSD how to spread the awareness that there is no cure uh, people are dying every day from it there again is no cure I have denial letters from Mayo Clinic I think I've told you that before I've done lots and lots of traditional therapies lots of alternative therapies I do believe the body has the innate capability to heal itself but at some point you have to start looking in a little bit another direction so I'm gonna get there in just a second so we talked about courage I think this really describes Pam to a T that courage is the choice and willingness to get out of your comfort zone maybe to have a little bit of anguish maybe to have through some pain or endure some pain have some danger have some you know heart invested in it. and this could be a relationship it could be a stock market investment it could be getting a new job getting a puppy adopting a child so you look at that thing there's uncertainty with that and we know that courage is the strength to face something through pain or through grief without certainty so Pam uh, so when we got together four years ago, I know mm -hmm. the story, some people might know. Tell us a little bit about what was going on with your health because you had been hospitalized on your deathbed. Yes. But this is what we talked about. But you know that feeling of being desperate to have anything that could potentially help you Absolutely. or saying, you know what, God, is this is my time. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> I'm in a good place. So Pam, talk a little bit about what you have been through in your own personal journey. 
So in 2015, um, my weight had reached a critical point that I was really scared for my health. And that was about the time that Dr. Heather and I reconnected. And I basically asked for help. I'm like, what can I do? I don't know what to do. I've done everything. I've been told. I've tried everything. And I continue to get fatter no matter what I do, no matter how I eat, no matter whether I exercise or anything else. And um, four years earlier, five years earlier, was when I had been hospitalized. And that had really set me back. Um, because before I was hospitalized, I was in great health. I had just had a physical and overall, I was in really good health. I was still overweight, but I was in great health. When I went in the hospital... So I'm going to say, so health and fitness are not the same thing. I did a little video about that earlier. So people prejudge, that's a great thing. People prejudge health with obesity or health with your body size or fitness. So you can have a super fit person who is not healthy at all. Right. Or you can have a person who has excess body weight, but metabolically they could be in a healthier state than someone who's physically fit, so to speak. Right, and I was one of those people because I ate well, I did exercise, I was quite active and everything, I was strong, I was healthy. Um, and all my numbers and labs showed that I was healthy. And then I went in and had my gallbladder out and my life turned upside down in a day in just a few hours and I was very very sick with um, a bile leak and a pretty bad hemorrhage and it put me um, on my butt for six months and I couldn't do anything breathing was hard let alone anything else so I definitely couldn't exercise or walk or anything anyway so fast forward now to 2015 that's five years later I'm still not well as far as my health goes at that point because I had been set so far backward I couldn't get any steps forward and then in addition to that I gained weight which only made it more difficult and it scared me it scared me really badly and so I talked to Dr. Heather and she started talking to me about the ketogenic lifestyle and about ketones and I said, okay, I'm ready to do something, let's let's go. And she basically kind of started me slow on how to get started and I started cooking with her and I was able to do more and more. And slowly but surely over about 16 months, I lost 90 pounds of fat doing the ketogenic diet, which turned my life around again. Um, and I got much healthier and much more fit. I'm st still not where I'd like to be. Um, I have been stuck again now uh, because we need to get some other things, hormones and things like that figured out. But overall, I've been doing the ketogenic lifestyle for three years now and I got a lot of people who were like, you can't eat like that. You can't eat fat and lose weight. You can't you know, eat low carb, it's bad for you. You can't do the ketogenic diet, it's bad for you. And I'm here to tell you that all my labs are great and I've taken off the 90 pounds and kept the 90 pounds off and they're wrong. <laughs> so I didn't know she was gonna go on to all that. Sorry. But that is no, an amazing story, but we kind of talked about, and I see this all the time with weight loss, we'll use that for a moment, and then we'll talk about breast cancer, where women, like Pam's lost 90 pounds, but inside when you look in the mirror, how do you feel? Or maybe you, you know, like, oh man, I look pretty good today, and then you look at a picture of yourself, like, did I really look like that? Did I have that chin? Did I have that? So oftentimes what we create in our mind isn't always what we see or what others see. And that's a simple thing is, I ask people, what is that one thing about your face you don't like your nose, your lips, your this, and what I may think be out of balance, somebody else may think themselves personally. So we are our own worst enemy when it comes to judging things. And as a healthcare physician, I've always focused on everyone else's health. I wanted to lead with health. I've never had a cigarette, um, so I always exercise. I want to be functionally fit at 50, but when I had to exercise, I just called it a, an accident, not exercise, a big detour. I always wanted to lead by example for my patients, my family, my kiddos, their generation. And when I had an accident um, and broke my leg, and, and I said, you know what? And they said, you can't really run. You can't really kickbox for nine months. I was like totally devastated. I'm like, how do you not exercise like every day for nine months? So anyway, I took a moment, 
strapped up my big girl panties like okay I'm gonna teach people that in any given situation you can control what you eat you can make that conscious decision to be healthy or not to be fit or be not so fast forward things actually didn't go as well as planned end up developing a very very rare disease called RSD reflex sympathetic dystrophy or chronic regional pain syndrome again I know everybody out there has been through some journey so like Pam when she was having all of the gallbladder stuff she could have tapped out the will couldn't been there so for her that first pound was so important to lose or to when she hadn't been exercising going out for the first five minute walk is so important to lose so I am here for some true life confessions so um, I had a little spot on my forehead I asked my friend dr. Christine who's a family practice doctor she says go have it checked out I went and had it checked out and the doctor's like it is just a wisdom spot <laughs> The old age spot. Anyways, like, let me check out the rest of you. So anyway, I ended up finding some skin cancer that was positive. So I'm having that taken off Tuesday. Again, as a healthcare practitioner, or someone who's on a ketogenic, low carb lifestyle, tries to live relatively clean, use, um, you know, we talk about detergents, healthy detergents, healthy things on my face. I we're still exposed to toxins. So that was a bit of identity crisis for me when I got that back. But I was a girl in the 80s. I definitely burned when I was a little kid. Had to wear a t-shirt at the pool. I was fair skinned. I used to lay with my sister on top of the barn roof and we would put Crisco or lard on our bodies. And then in college, we had this sun porch at the Zeta house, right? Zeta's on there. And then I worked at a tanning booth, better yet. So I just tanned and tanned and tanned away. So yeah, Ashley caught up with me. So that was kind of my identity crisis because as a healthcare pro pro healthcare pro health care professional I'm nervous that you want to lead from the front when things happen you either embrace them and overcome them and then be real to let you know nobody on here is perfect and I think I've shared that before like people prejudge my face then they see them in a wheelchair they're like they had no idea I've had people come up to me like I can't believe that you're a health uh, you know health educator that you're a doctor and you have through this and thank you for the hardest guys this is hard for me to say but um, but we do know that two out of three women get cancer one out of two men to get cancer so the stats are there I definitely burned and tanned and was exposed to toxins and stuff and things like that I've always exercised my whole entire life I have watched what I've eaten my whole entire life fast forwarding to my accident when I actually got the diagnosis of RSD or CR CRPS my doctor actually got a tear in his eye and said and I got diagnosed very early which was 10 weeks after my injury said I think you have reflex sympathetic dystrophy I'm like that's okay I can get through that the body can heal I know what I'm gonna do I was already on a ketogenic diet since I had fallen I'm gonna do this I'm gonna upgrade my N acetylcysteine I'm gonna do some IV bags nutrition I'm gonna do some some of this therapy that therapy I'm gonna do some biofeedback neurofeedback I'm gonna get my brain calmed down because the pain centers in the brain so I was all about this I did three different weeks at the Carrick Brain Center which is the most elite brain center I even did um, a week an ICU of ketamine which is supposed to put people in remission or some sort of remission for 70% of the people it didn't happen for me I remember I came out of that horrific week um, and day 13 happened to be Easter I was washing my hands underneath the water and that feeling I'd had before the ketamine all that came back like my hands were just boiling and burning and everything hurt sheets hurt so all that kind of had stuff go bad yes this is from a broken ankle so um, was talking with again I've been praying for God to bring me positive strong people that have RSD not people who you know want to start pointing fingers need a pity party because I know sometimes you gotta let that stuff out but I really wanted someone to support me so I was blessed to connect with uh, Amberly Largo his amazing book out called grit and grace uh, Kelly Wally I shouldn't say people's names a bunch of amazing women who are inspiring they are unstoppable no matter what happens and then at Christmas I got a call and somebody said well and I've had people ask me many many times why don't you just cut off your leg I'm like because the feedback is still in the brain cut off the leg it still travels you don't amputate with C RPS or uh, RSD that was you know the first couple years I had it and then on Christmas I got an email and I said okay I'm gonna look up this this Dutch study I'm gonna look up this German study a hundred percent remission on people having amputation of the affected limb so I am here today I called Pam and I said you know first I back up how doors open and so I looked at the the study I had my husband read through it I sent it to dr. Carrick who was in charge of the Carrick brain center he's now at Harvard one of the most the top functional neurologist 
psychologists around. He was familiar with it. He has supported it. He goes, you have done everything you can do the last five years. You know, and again, I'm not going to go through the list of it because there's been a lot of stuff. Um, you know, people laying hands on, people praying. I've done extended fasting, block fasting, uh, a lot of great nutrition, detox my house for the most part, trying to get rid of plastic, you know, using glass, all those type of things. And then the whole gratitude attitude thing. Um, and so I sent a note to Dr. Carrick and he was very supportive and said, you know what, this may be something we need to look into. I sent a, the same article, the Dutch article to uh, Dr. Barlot, who was my amazing, amazing neurosurgeon. Couldn't be more blessed. He put in both of my spinal cord stimulators and he picked up the phone and called me. He goes, I think it's something we should consider. I haven't talked to him since I was in the hospital last December with a big flare up. And he's like, I know a guy here in Denver who only does knee down amputation, botched surgery. Um, let me write him a note. So Dr. B wrote Dr. H a note. And within like 48 hours, I got a call from the office and said, can you be here Wednesday, which was last week. I said, no, give me like a week time. I had to, you know, because it's expensive to travel out and find somebody willing to go with you. And so those doors kind of opened up. And so people like amputation, like, yes, because RSD, when you look at it on the McGill study is a 50 of pain. It's higher than amputation. It's higher than, than childbirth. It's actually done four times naturally. It's higher than cancer. So when you look at, I'm already living the highest amount of pain. Amputation is less pain than that on a McGill study. So what do I have to lose? Maybe it is going to help. Because what happens is when I stand up, when I put pressure on my leg, when I put clothes or can you put a shoe on my foot still, it causes so much pain that my heart rate elevates, I get diaphoretic, the nitric oxide, my body's trying to just save it so it cools it down, my foot goes to like 50 degrees and then it takes nitric oxide from my eyes, I lose my vision, I get dizziness, and then what happens, I lay down for several hours and it all warms up and then it's a hot fiery mess if you haven't seen the pictures. So thank you guys for the heart, seriously. I, I just, it's really about prejudging. So I'm going back the whole thing about the underwear, right? And like I, I told Pam, like if people and it's really hard to make your own decisions and to make them by yourself and when you start reaching out to people and Kat you're a huge inspiration to me because it's one pound at a time one step at a time the same as it is for Pam so uh, I have a lot of women out there to thank for actually helping me bring this to awareness I may see the doctor tomorrow and he may say no you're not a candidate but it really felt very peaceful in my heart once I kind of absorbed it if you have cancer cut it out that way it doesn't spread to the body if you have termites in your house cut it out so it doesn't spread right so it's the same kind of thing when the RSD when I stand the foot is a disabled limb I can't walk on it I can't put a sock on I can't put shoe on it so with that being said I hopefully and prayfully that this is the right door that God's meant to be opening because there are a lot of women who have not their people who've gotten 100% remission so I think you guys have known I've done 20 tried to do a 21 day fast I got to 14 days I'm people like why are you fasting like if they tell me I can walk and have a potential of dancing at my son's wedding whenever that is or dancing again with my husband so all those things have been taken away from me about everything that I love Pam knows I love every bit of being a mother I love to iron I love to vacuum I love to play in the snow I love to go I love to go rope climbing I love to go zip lining so the family went to Mexico I can't get on the beach I, I shouldn't say can't I'm not able to go on the beach and watch the kids play beach volleyball which I've done couldn't go zip lining in the jungle couldn't go skiing so hopefully those things could potentially be returned to me or I could just get the big no but I do think that when you're suffering from something whether it is depression whether it is obesity whether it is diabetes whether it's infertility whether it's migraines I don't know PTSD know that connect yourself and the tribe that you hang out with is the most important one so yes we have Facebook friends but I love all the hearts you guys are sending so I really said you know Pam's like get on there courage is the strength to face the pain and grief and without the uncertainty so that's kind of what is lined up for me this week which is a lot this week for me to do because I am missing out a lot of my family um, can't just jump in the car because I haven't driven in five years now and go see my kiddos I can't just go jump in the car to go to a school play I can't just go to the movie theater those things that's still very limited that I can do I definitely have come really far from what they expected they actually didn't expect me to be here so with that being said they're like we don't know what to do with you because you're still here and we don't know what to do but definitely the ketogenic diet on an autoimmune definitely the fasting definitely the prove its exogenous ketones definitely those things have absolutely helped me so spinal cord stimulators have helped 
about 30 to 40 percent I can now shower once a week to 10 days um, they my feet stop curling in when they're on I can actually put a sheet on top of my legs um, when I sleep sometimes but like riding in the airplane was horrific you know it shouldn't be a big deal sweating pain hot cold Pam's freezing I'm hot from the pain so my thing is it just makes your life uncomfortable like those things you'd like to do like want to go to you know a wedding with a friend and enjoy that or a celebration whether it's that kind of stuff so um, and if you don't have it all that stuff is within reach possibly yeah so and and that may be that may be true so I'm gonna keep you guys and be more honest about who I am I didn't go do my hair put new fresh makeup on for you guys we didn't check the lighting get our diva light on just really want to be um, and uh, Brad you're right the power of vulnerability is real but rejection is so high I've been rejected by so many doctors I've been rejected by friends because I didn't have I couldn't offer them back a carpool rider. I couldn't offer them back a cookie mill. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that vulnerability is really, really high. And I have been prejudged. I have been prejudged as people look at the top and they see you're in a wheelchair. And I somebody like, uh, you're Dr. Heather. I said, oh, you look familiar. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Dr. Heather. Like, no, that's not right. I said, yeah, I'm going ask Dr. Heather. I have a blog, chiropractor, four kids, you know, do some stuff for prove it, you know, nutrition specialist. No, that's not it. That's not <laughs> So it's funny that once people get stuck on something, that's all they see. Um, of you know, I've got a son who's got a birthmark. He forgot his Sarah's on his stomach, but he takes his shirt off. People stare at it, you know, because they just forget it's Sarah. If you have a birthmark on your face, you forget about it. You forget you have gray hair. But then again, other people are looking at other things on you. Mm -hmm. So this um, 24, 48 hours is a um, a courage, a journey of courage. Uh, I want it to be inspirational. I don't want I don't want pity. I would love prayers I would love support but if you're a person that does and it's hard because you know five years ago the body has the ability to heal itself if I do this this and this and this and this and if I do this then it's all going to come into play and again the SCS has helped 20 to 40 percent the ketones with the ketogenic diet has helped another 20 percent definitely when I'm in a happier place with friends that definitely helps when I have stress like trying to pack and my scooter battery went down and then we got to the airport and they had an air place so you you know normally you pull up to the gate at the um, airport and you get the uh catwalk what that what's that thing called uh, uh, jet, jet bridge jet bridge generally yeah. get a jet bridge we got like sky bridge snow bridge whatever so there were six of us it on the airplane long, yeah. <laughs> six of us on the airplane that could not walk or needed a uh, wheelchair assistance so everybody got off the plane and then you have to try to get down through the tunnel and everything else so talk about feeling a little trapped then the hotel um bus picked us up as a sprinter bus and then you can't get into that you got to slide yourself into it so those little challenges or the curb is way too deep and you can't figure out how to step into it uh, we have a room with two double beds and I can't get between the bed and the bathroom and the shower so you just have to laugh at that kind of stuff but you know those are the challenges that you kind of don't see I often don't show colors of my folks I don't want to gross anybody else but Renee you're right like thank you for praying for me and thank you for praying for Pam because I do find I, I know that we're all not perfect we should all know that right we all have our issues our things and I think when you can start taking your things and you can own them and say the RSC doesn't own me I'm in charge of that I can help make those decisions then it kind of sets everything free and I'm hoping that this is the right answer or I'm hoping that maybe if it's not the right answer that Pam's story my story something just clicks and inspires like somebody else needs to hear this Be um, you know I've been paired to a lot of things like I had some gal who needed to lose a couple hundred pounds and she's like I'm gonna wait till I'm done so I have that amazing before and after I'm like it's really more powerful to take people along the journey with you like you're training for a marathon or you, I mean people like to go through childbirth you're sick the first one now you're having cramps now you can't bend over and tie your shoe people love that stuff because it's real and it happens to all of us mm -hmm. um, so we Pam and I over talked this just where should we go with this how can we inspire people no matter what your invisible illnesses or what your challenges are but I do appreciate all your prayers and support and I will try to be um, more real and true and authentic. I think I'm always authentic because my words are never, <laughs> we're never right. I'm always scrambling over things like Jet Bridge and whatever it's called. And we got to hear Denver super cold. And Pam's like, no, you got to go outside the plane. Like we're in the middle of the lot. And you know, with federal law regulations, you can't get outside. And then, then it was, I don't think it was ADA. That thing was so steep. It was very yeah, steep. Yeah, very, very steep. So And long. And long. So... <laughs> 
I'm going to ask Pam here because, you know, again, when you see people before and after, what we see is an amazing transformation. But oftentimes I hear people say, I still don't feel like that. Or sometimes I still feel like that fat person. Or, you know, a friend Carrie who, you know, shared her amazing story has ileostomy or colostomy bag. I mean, that that's actually I, that's an identity sometimes an identity thing you have to kind of wrap your mind around and she shared a story that a 10 year old kid or 12 year old kid committed suicide because they were making fun of him because he had uh, a colostomy bag kid didn't choose that it's just what happened but uh, my thing would be is you know just try to be inspiring to people that you know or maybe don't know and don't know what they're going through smile at them wave at them you know again whether it's cancer migraines heart disease you just lost a loved one I always say infertility because I do have some patients who just that is the one thing they want to do is get that gift from God and sometimes that stops them you know and then when people are overweight like it's overweight just stop eating you can hear Pam Pam was a hamster on the on the meal wheel she ate all the low fat everything she was supposed to do this worked for her yep. so we aren't gonna make it about the ketogenic diet we're gonna make it about um, hope and inspiration mm -hmm. and courage and having faith because I posted a post today it says God's word says that there's no hopeless situation so when Pam was in a hospital bed going it's okay if I don't wake up tomorrow kind of tired of this or when Josh Collins went through everything he went through and thought you know what I got two choices to make. We know that there are at least 25 attempts every single day on suicide. One is successful. RSD has the highest pain on the McGill study, higher than amputation, higher than pregnancy, higher than cancer. It is also called AKA the suicide disease because the pain never goes away. People see you in a wheelchair and think, oh, they don't have any pain. They're like mm -hmm. a paraplegic. There's nothing going on. People grab me at church. People grab you like, I don't know what that is. I'm 5'11 or 5'10 and a half. And when I was tall, nobody was doing that. But, um, I, I think I want to just help continue to take you guys along this journey with me. I, you have my permission to share my story. I think Pam gives her permission. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and she's being real. When you get stuck, then people kind of hide away, right? Or they hide from you at the grocery store. They don't show up at your house. And people are working out and feel great. That's when they want to share stuff. We're going to share stuff, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and usually I don't really show a lot of pictures of my feet because I think it doesn't look very good. And it's not about sympathy. It's just about reality. And you don't really know what someone's going through until some Sometimes you have to see it. That's why people slow down at the side of a car wreck, mm -hmm. or they want to watch those stories, those, I don't know, whatever those things are on TV, because it intrigues people. Mm -hmm. But I think what's more intriguing is people overcoming things. People living in that state of uncertainty, living in that state of courage, and knowing that there's no hopeless situation. Our hope is the anchor of our soul. So if you're suffering from something, you know someone who's suffering from something, and maybe you haven't been as compassionate, maybe you've been a little judgmental. That's happened to everybody. We've all done it. I've been guilty of it. I'm sure Pam's been guilty Absolutely. of it. But maybe reach out to that person and go, man, I'm sorry that time you asked me to get that grocery store run or do that or I didn't listen a minute more. Let let me know what's going on because I know that we can see things and people going on and like, man, she's something's going on. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, Pam, something's going on with Spoon and we don't want to talk to Spoon because she might not go on. Well, you know what? Go address that person. Hey, something's going on. I'm here if you want to listen. Right. Here if you want to talk. None of us are perfect. We all have challenges. They're all in different degrees and everyone's experience is so much different of what they go through. I know my husband had to have his appendix taken out and at that point mountain time now he looks back like man I could have fought that I could have done this at that time and moment when you're in that much pain cut that thing out cut yeah, it it's out. infection bursting whatever it's right and so people are like you're gonna cut off your leg you're gonna consider amputation yes I will consider amputation if it's a hundred percent because even remember again RSD I already have a higher pain than what I have with RSD the great thing is I do have a spinal cord stem in which would help with the phantom pain um, the question is am I candidate or not has it already spread too far to my arms and my other leg too far for me to be a candidate that's really what stopped me from being a candidate in many studies at UCLA um, studies the Mayo Clinic because I don't qualify I've already has spread too much too fast so anyway thank you guys for listening thank you for joining us um, and thank you for your prayers and your warm hearts and I'm gonna let Pam just close out whatever she wants to say I just want to say thank you and and definitely I want people to be more aware and more compassionate of others who might be going through things because as Dr. Heather said, we are all going through something and just because you can't see exactly what it is doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And just keep that in mind with other people because there's a lot of silent pain 
out there and and pain that you can't see you can't physically see and just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist amen sister amen with that <laughs> person amen peace out you guys Bye. have a good night and good night. we may have something to report tomorrow <laughs>